Hello and welcome to edumate.tv. I'm Chetan Shah. We learn to live and live to learn in what has turned out to be an unprecedented situation, an unprecedented pandemic. With history being written across the geography of Mother Earth and a minor virus has created a major catastrophe. Making each and every one of us rewind, reset, rethink reformat before we rebuild a new future. In the world of education, particularly higher education, the challenges are plenty, but there are solutions as well, and as well as opportunities. But to spot them, you need one trait, and that's the trait of wisdom. Wisdom to learn from the past, the experiences of the past, the knowledge of the past, and wisdom to be flexible for the future, anticipate the future, embrace the future, evolve with the future. And that's what makes our wise Chancellor. Today we have a very wise Chancellor with us. We have uh, Mr. Vinay Agarwal from ISBM Chhattisgarh joining us in our studios at Edimate.tv. Thank you for joining us. Sir. Talk us through the unique challenges for Mr. Agarwal and ISBM in these very unique circumstances. This pandemic has created a lot of challenges, a lot of uh, food for thought basically. What are we going to do further? As in, in, in India, uh, we, come for, we come from a country where uh, infrastructural facilities are limited. And uh, uh, online education uh, in India was not uh, uh, going that great and that was not being promoted by the government uh, uh, in any which way. After this pandemic coming in, we uh, are all suddenly uh, moving on to online mode of education, right? Now, we don't know the nitty gritties. We don't know. Uh, we don't have the understanding of online education. We don't have the knowledge of what is um, uh, uh, effective online education. Actually, creating a content, audio lectures, and and you know some PPTs wouldn't suffice, uh, won't be uh, uh, at par with the classroom education. We we are located in a uh, tribal area of Chhattisgarh. The population is very uh, raw. It's like uh, the, the population is tribal population. We have villages all across uh, in, a, in uh, nearby over the camp, our campus. So uh, students over there, they're not that uh, tech savvy. Neither are they uh, very well uh, accustomed with uh, uh, this online mode of uh, education. The language is the problem, so we have to go uh, to our vernacular uh, language and teach them what exactly, uh, what concept are we trying to teach them. So the thing is, uh, online education has got uh, great challenges. Today we are talking on Zoom, uh, on uh, a Google Meet or say uh, other WebEx or something like that. But then that is not uh, what we were prepared for initially classroom training will of course uh, will have to get it back but then uh, online will we will have to make sure that we have some online content or online presence where we are able to also uh, uh, cater to the students about the online mode of education because because if they don't have resources if they have uh, 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 online resources they will not be ever going online and, and trying to study over there. it's a one-way communication system over there online so it's a bit uh, kind of challenging to uh, for the students right now, even for the teachers, because they have to uh, act not as a, not as a teacher. Uh, in fact, they have to act as an actor on the in front of the camera. So that is a big challenge for them. So, so what is the bigger challenge, teaching the teachers or teaching the students? Both, in primarily teaching the teacher, because yeah. teachers are because see that's that's a universal fact. In fact, no, nobody would have experienced that before coming in front of a camera. But uh, when you get in, uh, when you come in front of a camera, it's very uh, uh, like uh, you get nervous. People cannot speak in front of a camera, and teachers specifically they cannot. So for it's a, they require a lot of practice for that. And also the fact that you know they've already learned so much, so they've got to unlearn and then you know relearn, which is a double exercise as, as opposed to the, the student. It really makes a difference. But that having been said, I know for a fact that ISBM has come out with some very creative solutions. So what are those solutions? We have this online uh, live lecture system wherein we are training students uh, uh, from Bombay also and the local local teachers over there are also, also teaching over there. It's an online uh, satellite based system and, and we have uh, uh, got that classroom in, in our campus and 
in the uh, nearby three villages we have uh, uh, installed our uh, classrooms nearby where students are can come over there and they can study but because of the social distancing again the classroom is not working because this online system uh, 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 like online mode of education from bombay the quality uh, the type of teachers we get in bombay we don't get that kind of teachers in chatisgarh so these teachers when they are teaching from here in bombay uh they uh, now what they are doing is they are teaching our teachers to how to stand or what to say in front of the camera over here and uh, trying to create a storyboard like what uh, like like a screenplay what you have to write what you have to say uh, uh, you know when will that uh, when will the editor edit the uh, uh, ppt or xyz so this is what we are trying to do but then still it is 60 to 65% effective it's not 100% effective as classroom training There's an entire ecosphere of education which is very confused, right? Even the government itself, because it's it's an unprecedented situation even for them. So we've heard some policy making, we've heard some voices, Supreme Court being involved, examinations being scrapped, assessments being changed. Uh, uh, you know, there's been a, an uprising against the fee structure, uh, against the need to reduce curriculum, uh, and of course also uh, the enforcement of online has been very haphazard. So it's all been rather confusing. and in a situation of like a pandemic and a crisis you don't want confusion you want consistency i mean consistency is you can get it right or wrong but you need to be consistent so uh, what are your findings what are your observations we we come from a country of gurukul where classroom training was was been considered as the uh, best training model now when we uh, we talk about uh, online thing government has to be confused government will be confused because it was never uh, the primary uh, concern in in our country that we will be going on uh this pandemic has created a lot of confusion as in what will happen in the future will there be jobs in the market how will be the economic situation further what uh, are, uh, what are, what the, should the student opt for like uh, higher education is all about opting your your stream everybody is going online everybody is working from home so everybody wants to go into it so there are n number of confusions n number of things which will figure out which will, we will be able to figure out by the end of this year daily in the news we see that uh, this pandemic has not even uh, uh, reached uh, to its uh, peak over here in india it is the peak is going to come and this and that so we don't know what scenarios would change further and with with other issues with our kind with china and other things we don't know whether uh, uh, manufacturing uh, would come back to india so students will would, would opt for say mechanical engineering or say production engineering or something what courses would be running what scope would be there further we don't yeah but that having been said you'll have to anticipate yes. because otherwise how are you going to you uh, you're going to prepare your students for the new future so we talked about you know the the challenges in online education and and this and, and the systemic changes uh, for the teachers but that having been said uh, in higher education it's very critical and important to prepare our students uh, a to make them employable and relevant in terms of careers and this is also a time when you know uh, uh, ugc itself has approved interdisciplinary studies you know you can study physics as well as music for instance that wide variety so that you can you know uh, uh, invoke any career option so what are your thoughts and uh, what are the action being taken by the university on that ugc has really worked really well very positive because dual degree programs have been allowed now. Uh, students examination as i said in the previous question what you asked me was exams were was been scrapped now they are again uh, they are asking to, to take the examination but then they uh, uh, final year examinations are very important if you don't have a final year examination it won't uh, you know we cannot assess the student properly dual degree programs in this uh, time is very important because uh, uh, students have got plenty of time at uh, at home they can pursue one as, as uh, one of the courses as their career and other as their passion whether what students would be doing once this uh, uh, the situation is under control uh, one uh, one course they will be going to the college and other would be in online this is what i think the future is for yeah i think and that's that's very well put you know the fact is that you can you have the option of of uh, pursuing your career as well as your passion i mean normally ideally one would want you know your career to be your passion so Uh, Mr. Vinay Agarwal, tell me, is your career your passion? When I was a student, uh, I didn't know that I would go into uh, this particular stream. It just happened, and but today I am really happy doing this because it's actually my passion, which I have figured out uh, lately. That uh, when you see students coming back to you, when you see students coming uh, and talking to you, uh, praising you, or you know, just just giving you regards, just giving you that respect that sir, this was good that we were studying over here and we got this opportunity because of this, and, and they like that. 
that is priceless student who haven't even gone to raipur from like my uh, the capital of the city state have come to bombay for internships and uh, they have come to uh, uh, come to bombay for uh, for jobs which we uh, uh, which they could uh, uh, get through a university placements also since there are so many options perhaps there's a problem of plenty i think it's also important to hedge your bets you know if you have two options and maybe one can be used as a backup in case the other doesn't work out and we never had those opportunities you know uh, at our time tell us about the future of, of and the opportunities for the university your university as to an isb and what is uh, the vision for the future see we uh, are uh, situated in a uh, remote area over there and what i have seen is the potential over there in that area students don't don't get that many uh, avenues where they can uh, explore their talent they have got raw talent they have got the passion to work they want to excel they want to like they are real hard working students over there and as compared to students in the city you get only 20% students like that over there in in the villages you get 80% students who are very hard working and they want to prove uh, something to to their fans over there what i am planning is to further expand this isb university network in other remote areas of the country and serve students uh, similarly the way we are serving it over there secondly you when you create a network of universities or network of centers all across the country you have got uh, multiple uh, uh, stations where uh, students uh, can come for online learning because uh, 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 getting an internet connection or you know the infrastructure is not that great that uh, you will be getting full speed internet connection everywhere so a satellite based classroom uh, uh, internet based uh, uh, like lead line can be created a um, uh, lab can be created in each and every or say small small uh, towns where students can uh, come over there and they can uh, uh, get education high uh, uh, quality education uh, wherever they are so students will not have to travel to bangalore or, or pune or say Uh, Greater Noida or the Bombay for education. In a way, in a way, COVID is also pushing us to make a more horizontal growth in this country. It has to be more uniform. Right now, it's very skewed towards the cities. There is high pressure in the cities, and of course, it's people like you that will be taking it into rural India. And let's not forget that India remains an agricultural economy. Whatever you say, we've got services, but you know, our dependency on agriculture is very high. And Bharat has to grow for India to grow. And I'm so glad, and I salute you for actually taking up that as a cause. and ensuring that our, our rural sector uh, you know is able to seize the opportunity just like the urban sector is now in terms of seizing opportunities there are opportunities for several sections of our society uh, mr agarwal but uh, everybody is not able to take them so i'd like you to advise four sections of our education ecosphere uh, the student the parent the teacher and your fellow vice chancellor what would be your advice to them students uh, they shouldn't be worrying about the future right now. because it's not uh, that uh, only they are suffering through it because students actually uh, who are into higher education like who are completing their masters or who are completing their graduation they tend to uh, get nervous about their future like what will happen so first first of all they don't have to be uh, nervous about what is going to happen for them so whatever is going to happen will be good only because the entire world is uh, going through it it's not only themselves parents of course uh, you'll have to uh, of course uh, uh, support your child like in, in cities like bombay where people uh, where the density is so high uh, uh, in a uh, single flat there would be seven eight people staying in in one flat and uh, students or, or the the child the children they don't get space to study so that parents will have to understand that they give them that space that they, they give them that kind of a uh, atmosphere to study over there online because they're, they're right now they are not a, going to any classes any school any college for uh, studying so that that rhythm should be maintained the rhythm shouldn't be lost if that rhythm is lost then definitely it will be uh, very uh, difficult for students to cope up again so it, it takes a lot of time teachers of course they are doing a great job even in this uh, situation they are coming to the campus they are recording lectures from their home they are being mentor mentoring the students and they are doing a wonderful job all across all the teachers all across the country they are doing super because uh, in schools also they they are uh, uh, doing uh, assignment online assignments online lectures and what not everything they, they are doing for whatever they can and very passionately they are doing so it it is a superb thing other chancellors of the university of course everybody is struggling with this situation we are not able to collect the fees we are not able to get the fees but we have to pay to the uh, to the teachers and that is right now what we have to do we have to bear it at, at this moment but i'm sure this will be rewarding us further in our in coming months i will be uh, 
coping up with the situation and will be coming will be back on track so just uh, we'll have patience this is what i can suggest them nothing else well i thank you for your patience i thank you for your fast sight i thank you for your foresight i thank you for your sense of enterprise mr agarwal and i thank you very much for your enormous sense of social obligation it's been a pleasure to talk to you you are very well worthy of being our wise chancellor thank you for this speech i do made it is a beautiful initiative what you have started and uh, it's a it's a wonderful thing where educators of the country they can come on a one platform and they can share their their thoughts their views because ultimately educators are thinkers which actually uh, uh, shape up the future of the country they are uh, being uh, interviewed by 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 people like you who yourself have got so, so much knowledge the advice is what from other other chancellors and vice chancellors or the principals or uh, the uh, uh, owners of of the institution they 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 would be like you know uh, uh, enlightened with 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 new knowledge and new uh, avenues and horizons where they can take their institutions to